Yes, we were talking about integrals. Uh, All right, so here is the definition for the derivative of an inverse function. Okay, sometimes you will be given the function, sometimes you will be given the table of values, sometimes you will just be given select values. Okay, you should be used to that kind of idea at this point um, with any of these things, but here is uh, the interval, or excuse me, the inverse. Of course, your function has to be differentiable. F has to have an inverse function. We're going to call it G right here. Um, if F has an inverse, then the inverse is also differentiable. Uh, anywhere where the composition of the function and its inverse is not equal to zero. Um, so here's how to find the derivative of the inverse function of G. Okay? Uh, excuse me, the inverse of f, which is g. The derivative is 1 over f prime of g of x, um, given that that's not equal to 0, because we can't divide by 0. Now, that looks really weird, okay? It looks really weird, okay? But let's actually look at an example for it to make, more, to make more sense, okay? So, here's our function. Yes. No, 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 that's the chain rule. That's the chain rule. This is just saying that the derivative of g, g being the inverse, you may not actually have an equation for the inverse function. So you have to use this formula right here to actually do it. Okay? Alright, so, for example, f of x is 1 fourth x cubed plus x minus 1. We cannot find the inverse of that function, okay? We cannot find the inverse of that function because if we switch x and y, remember that's how we find an inverse, and then we try and solve for y, we would not be able to isolate it because we have y cubed and just a plain y. Um, so we couldn't actually solve to get the equation for the inverse. So all we can do is answer questions about select points. So I went ahead and told you that f of 2 is equal to 3. So if f of 2 is equal to 3, the first question we need to answer is, what's the value of the inverse function of x, or of f, when x is 3? What's the value of the inverse when x is 3? 2. The inverse switches the x and y values. So on the original, and you may want to write this in there, the original has the point 2, 3, so the inverse is going to have the point 3, 2. So the value of f inverse of 3 is equal to 2. Inverse functions switch the x and y values. So part b, what's the value of the derivative of the inverse? Okay, so Let's use the formula that's on your on the left side of your paper there. Okay, f inverse is the same as g. Okay, sometimes they just use that g notation so that there aren't so many exponents and crazy things going on. Okay, so f inverse prime, the derivative of the inverse is equal to one over f prime of the inverse, I should go ahead and plug in 3 here, sorry. Of 3. Okay, this is just the equation from the left side of your page. I just used the inverse notation instead of g. Okay, so we just established in the previous step what f inverse of 3 is. It is 2. Okay, now our last step here we need to find out f prime of 2. So f here is referring to the original function. We need to find f prime of x. That would be 3 fourths x squared plus 1. Bring down the exponent, subtract 1 from the exponent. So 3 fourths x squared, derivative of x is 1. So f prime of 2 would be 3 fourths times 2 squared plus 1. Well, that's 3 plus 1, which is 4. 
So the value of the derivative of the inverse when x equals 3 is 1 fourth. Okay? We would not have been able to do that without this formula because we would not have been able to find the an, uh, an equation for the inverse that we would have been able to take the derivative from. Okay? So we have to go through this process right here. And this is just something you've got to memorize. There may be one question on the AP exam that has this. Okay? Honestly, they don't test this very heavily, but it may show up. Okay. Let's look at another example. Okay, let's look at another example. Find the derivative of the inverse tangent function. Okay, so we're gonna find the derivative of the inverse tangent function. I'm gonna be honest, I'm afraid I'm gonna screw it up. I've never actually done this example, but it's just a textbook, and it's good. So but it, it's I'm glad that they put it in here because otherwise when you look at the derivatives of the inverse trig functions, you look at them and you're like, they don't have any trig in them. Why don't they have any trig in them? Okay, and th this really, to, and I wanted the same thing. I'm like, well, where did that come from? This is going to explain it. Okay, so we're going to say that our f of x is the tangent of x, okay, because we're wanting to find the derivative of the inverse tangent function, okay? So to find the derivative of that, we are finding the derivative of the inverse tangent, okay? Um, just as a side note, I don't like to write it this way, but a lot of times you will see it written this way, the arc tangent of x, okay? I prefer to use the inverse notation, but a lot of times you may see it in the book as arc tangent. Okay, so using our derivative of the inverse function, it is 1 over f prime of the inverse tangent okay so that means we're plugging the inverse tangent into the derivative of tangent now what is the derivative of tangent secant squared okay secant squared now I'm going to use something from pre-calc here, okay? Does anybody remember the Pythagorean identities? The sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1, okay? There is also one that said that the uh, secant squared is equal to the tangent squared of x plus 1. Secant squared is equal to tangent squared of x plus 1. Now, the reason why I bring that up is because I'm getting ready to plug the inverse tangent in for x. Well, if I plug it in the tangent, that's going to be handy because when you plug the inverse of something into its inverse function, what's the property of inverses? They undo each other, right? Like e and that's a log, okay? They undo each other. Um, squaring the square root, they're inverses. They undo each other. So, since we've expressed the derivative of tangent as tangent squared plus 1, then that means we plug the inverse tangent in for x of the tangent, and it is squared, and we're adding 1 to the end. And if we're plugging the inverse tangent into the derivative of tangent, which we have now said is tangent squared of x plus 1. Tangent and inverse tangent undo each other, so all you are left with is the x, and it is squared because it is tangent squared. So the derivative of the inverse tangent function is 1 over x squared plus 1. <laughs> It has absolutely no trig in it. It literally only has um, x squared plus 1 in the denominator. And that's why. Okay? That is why. Um, now. All right. Um,
Um, so, big picture. Don't stress out if you don't understand this entire process of what I just did. Okay. This was just a derivation of me showing you where the derivative of the inverse tangent comes from uh, and why it has no trig functions in it is x squared plus 1. So you will see on the next slide I have the derivatives of all the inverse trig functions. Now, um, I love this book for several, several reasons. Uh, but one of the reasons why I love it is because um, the guy that wrote it has been involved with the AP exam for many, 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 many years. And so he has these little notes in the margin, and um, he says the differentiation of inverse trig functions is sometimes tested on the AP exam. So it doesn't show up every single year. It does show up every once in a while. Um, but the inverse sine and inverse tangent functions are the most likely topics, okay? So inverse sine and inverse tangent are really the most important ones that you need to focus on um, when it comes to uh, these derivatives of inverse trig functions. Okay? Don't stress out so much over the cosecant, secant, cotangent. Um, and really, cosine is just the negative version of sine. Um, so anyways, hopefully that helps relieve some stress. Okay. All right, so let's practice with uh, these rules, okay? And I'm not going to lie, this is one of those things, this is one of the few topics in calculus that I don't really keep these rules memorized because they come up so infrequently. So I'm going to sit here and cheat and use the book as we go through these examples. Just being up front with it. Okay, so. If we are taking the derivative of the arc sine of 2x, and I did write it the way that they have it in the book using the arc um, notation, okay? So according to our rule, the, arc, the derivative of the arc sine of u, on top we put the derivative of the angle. So the angle here is 2x, so we're going to have 2 in the numerator. And it is over the square root of 1 minus u, the angle, squared, and the only thing we have to do is simplify that. So that's the square root of 1 minus 4x squared. You square the 2 and you square the x. So that is the derivative of the arc sine of 2x. Okay, the derivative of the arc tangent of 3x. So our arc tangent rule is the derivative of the angle goes on top. So 3 goes on top, and it's uh, over 1 plus u squared, u being the angle. So over 3x squared. So again, we need to simplify that. That's 1 over, excuse me, 3 over 1 plus 9x squared. No, you cannot simplify the 3 and the 9 because of that 1. If that 1 was a multiple of 3, then yes. Okay, but it is not, so that is it. Okay? Arc sine of the square root of x. Okay, on top we put the derivative of what's on uh, the inside, the angle. So the derivative of the square root of x is 1 half x to the negative 1 half. Over the square root of 1 minus the angle squared, so the square root of x squared. So, uh, let's see what we need to do here. 1 half up there in the numerator, uh, that 2 needs to go to the denominator, and the negative 1 half power moves that x to the denominator. And we have the square root of 1 minus x because squaring the square root, they're inverses, they undo each other. And then that x to the 1 half, that means that x is under a square root, so we can combine those square roots down there. So that's the square root of x times 1 minus x. They multiply it out in the book. I believe you believe it in fact that you can very easily tell that that is x minus x squared, right? Okay, last one, arc secant of e to the 2.